Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to figure out the AC hum coming out of the speakers with this Pioneer SX750. In the last video we saw ChatGPT gave me all kinds of advice and ideas on what could be wrong with this receiver and I didn't really listen to much of any of those. I thought it was the filter capacitors and, well, it was not. Even though this capacitor right here shows physical signs of damage, this was not the issue with this receiver. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And I will show you, well, I gotta plug it in first. Let's go ahead and turn this on, and I will show you that we've got some humming coming from the speakers, just for a refresher. Let's wait for the relay. There it was. Maybe you can hear that. You get all kinds of fun stuff. So, there's something seriously wrong in there. And we're gonna get to the bottom of that in this video. So, buckle up, we're gonna take apart this power supply check some voltages and see what's going on. So I said in the last video I was excited to show you all kind of how you work on the power supply board on this receiver. And the way we're going to get the power supply board out is we're just going to take out two screws. We're going to take off this one here. And this one's got a little wire retainer thingy on it. You can see that loop there. We'll want to remember to put that back when we're done here. And now that we have those two out, all we do is kind of lift up. We can move these out of the way. And this is how you access the power supply on an SX750. You just bend it up and out like that. Look at that. Now you can just have easy access to all those joints. And uh, it's that simple to work on the power supply. So, I am jumping the gun though. We haven't even started checking voltages yet. And, well, that's also very easy because you've got all your pins laid out nice and clean right up here so if you're looking for a certain pin that you're referencing with the schematic it's uh, numeric 1 through 24 let's start by seeing if we can figure out what exactly is causing the humming here instead of just shotgunning it because you all get very uh, up in arms when I just shotgun something so let's try and do it the hard way and uh, figure out what's actually going on so there's a lot of pins on here right but Really, it's not that insane. Um, any of these blue wires, it just goes to one of these lamps right here. These four wires right here, this is your signal in and signal out for your protect circuit. So there's really only a few pins that we need to be concerned about, really. And uh, they're shown on this page of the service manual here. So I'll hook us up to ground so we can, you know, follow along here with one probe instead of holding this. And by do, I do that by just finding, you know, ground. Perfect, right there. So, let's go ahead and let's turn it on. We're going to go on the dim bulb just for safety, I guess. You know, if I really screw something up, I don't potentially blow the fuse. The dim bulb takes it up. If you look at the full schematic, uh, pins 18 and 16 right here, this is coming off of one of the bridge rectifiers on the power supply board underneath the receiver that we saw in the previous video. And what's coming off of here is completely unfiltered. Your filter capacitors are actually right here on this board. So the other bridge rectifiers for the power amp, these two are your actual filter capacitors for your power amp. And then it looks like pins 16 and 18, your actual filter capacitors would be right here. So that would be a great spot to start looking, I think. But anyways, Let's check to make sure we've got the negative 48 and positive 48 on each side at pins 16 and 18. So 16 is right here. We're supposed to have negative. Yep. And then 18 is right here. We're supposed to have positive. Now that's a little odd, don't you think? It's pretty odd that we don't have um, 48 right there. We only have 34 at pin 18. I'm quite suspicious of this capacitor here. Um, so I'm just going to go, and the reason I think that, so if you look at the schematic, you know, you've got your two pins coming in right here. We have our negative 48 right there, but we don't have our positive 48 here. And where does it go? That capacitor, and it makes its way to that capacitor too. So I think I'd like to check those real quick. So let's turn this off. And uh, let's start looking at some capacitors. So C17 is where I want to start, and that's that one right there. It's going to take a little bit to pull it because we uh, 
have a bunch of glue underneath. But let's see how this goes. So what I'm doing to pull this is I'm just heating each joint, but behind this board I'm kind of bending the capacitor in one direction. And what that's hopefully doing is weakening the glue, and then I keep these joints heated so that I don't like pull the trace out with it. And I'm making some progress but not much, so I'm going to bend the other way now, and i got to reposition my finger for that. Uh -huh. that. That's working much better, so as I bend it wants to slide out, and now we can see underneath this thing. Um, I don't know if that's a corroded lead, but it does not look pretty. Um, I'll show you what I got there. Can you see it? Will it focus? Yeah. Let's throw this on our capacitor tester and see what we get. So, one there. One there, and let's test it. Oh? Oh, it's monitoring all right, but uh, it's not finding a component. We've got a completely dead cap right here. Wow. Well, that's bad. Let's throw in a replacement right now and see if that fixes our problem. It's a 50 volt, 330 microfarad, and I should have one of those. I do. I did not take note of the orientation when I pulled it out, so shame on me, but I think this is right. So, let's solder this in real quick and see if that fixed our problem because that's a that's a really big problem right there I mean that's that's a, that's a critical filter cap right there okay that's done clean our tip uh, trim our leads and uh, see what we get here huh Okay, so I'll put this back down. I don't think we're going to be shorting on anything. Let's turn it back on. No shorts. It's not exploding. So now, let's check our pins again. What was that, 18 that was giving us the bad, or not ideal voltage? Huh, okay, so we've got 46 at 18 now. And 16. We've got the negative 47, so... Uh, that's very promising. Let's hook up the speakers and see if we get that noise again. Right, I'm about to put on the left speaker. I don't hear anything. Okay, my soldering iron is noisy. Let's hook up the right speaker. Do we hear anything? I don't hear anything. FM. Okay, obviously FM needs some help or an antenna, but folks, I believe we just fixed it. Let's get out everyone's favorite song. Okay, it's playing. Yeah, that's exactly where we were before. We obviously need to clean the controls. Got a really bad tape monitor switch, which is classic for these. Right channel's not working, but what is gone is the buzzing. And my goodness, my goodness, we have a beggar. We have a beggar. We have a visitor. Who wants to say hi? Who wants to say hi? 
It's New Year's Eve, Hodor. What do you have to say? Anything? Nothing to say? Put me down, please. Now that we've uh, fixed this, I think it's time to clean the controls. But before we clean some controls, I want to look again at pin 23. If you watched the last video, at the very end of it, we checked that and we saw we were supposed to have 34 volts, but we only had 29. So let's look at that again. Let's see what we've got there at pin 23. And now we have 32 volts, which is more than what we had before. That's more on check with what we want to see. And when we switch to AC, 0 volts AC. That is what we're supposed to see. In the last video, we saw we had like 1 point something volts AC, and that's what we were hearing through the speakers. So it's crazy. Just this one capacitor right here had completely failed, and that's what the issue was. Now for the uh, X50 Pioneer receivers, I like to remove the faceplate to clean the controls. And that's because we've got these toggle switches right here. It's best to access those through the front and uh, get them that way. And I'll show you what I mean as soon as we get all this stuff off. And besides, I need to, I need to figure out why these all look so bad. If you recall, when I power washed this receiver, I irresponsibly put this faceplate and all the controls in the dishwasher and I think that the uh, drying cycle combined with the detergent uh, left some less than ideal uh, white finish on here. We need to find a way to get that off. So this needs to come off anyways so I really don't have an issue with uh, pulling this right now. So we've got the two screws on top for the SX750 and then we have these nuts right here that are only finger tight on this one because I knew this was coming off again but you might need to use a deep socket to remove those on yours. Let's pull this off maybe, yes. Oh yeah, and one more thing with the faceplate, you've got these two washers right here just remember to put those back when you're done. I think they're basically just shims to get the faceplate sitting straight or something. I don't know. But let's look at these toggle switches first. This is why you take off the faceplate. Because what you can do is you can take your deoxit or whatever and you can stick your nozzle in right there and that's basically direct access to the inside of the switch. You'll flip it up, go like this for one and then you'll flip it down and do the same thing. And then all your deoxid is in the switch. You just do that a million times. And that's how you clean these toggle switches. So let's do that for each one of them. But yeah, I love these switches. They're very fun to use. We have two more on this side. These are your tone defeat switches. And what does the faceplate say? Oh yeah, the high filter. So basically the tone defeat that basically turns your bass and treble knobs on or off. This one right here. And then high filter. Well, I think we all know what the high filter does. It filters out the highs. The SX750 is actually really great to work on. Um, if you go up to the 850, that's when the chassis size changes. And you've got a whole other set of switches. Like you'll have your speaker switches, they're like kind of push button up on here. So basically what you're doing is you're taking the boards out from underneath for the controls. And then you have the switch boards that you pull out yet again. Um, I did a SX1280 years ago. That's how that setup is. But... Uh, the 750, it's just a lower level model. We don't have that, which means that to clean the controls, we can actually access everything from the back side just by going like this. You should probably unplug all your stuff. I'm just being lazy. So this right here is your selector switch. And as you can see, it's just metal on metal contacts in there. We're gonna go ahead and use the D5 because remember, the Deoxit D5 is best for metal-on-metal -metal contacts, 
and then the F5, this stuff in the green can, this is best for uh, plastic on metal or carbon pots essentially. For this I'll take one of the knobs and I'll just slide it back on so I can actually rotate the thing. This shaft is quite bent on the outside so I'll worry about that later. But yeah, we'll just get one side there, one side there, one side there, and then one side there. And then just do this a bunch of times. Next, let's move on. What do we have? It looks like we have the volume and balance knobs. So I'll flip the power board out of the way more so it's not quite in our way. You can see the balance and volume right in there. Now the volume is going to be very easy to get to. I'm going to kind of move above with my flashlight and you can see on the volume knob, this one here, you can get in easily with your uh, nozzle because it's kind of exposed, the wafers for the, uh, the pot, but the balance knob, it's a little more contained. That one's kind of off to the side. We might flip the receiver on its side to access the balance pot because the axis is actually from underneath, right down under there. But for now, let's take our F5 and let's put it inside of that little opening there. Oh, can you see that? We're just kind of going right up in there, like that for the one side, and then there's another pot for the other channel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll do it left-handed just so you can see. That's probably good. And now it's a balance pot. Yeah, I'll probably need to flip the receiver on its side for that. So that's going to be very difficult to show. I've tried showing that in the past, I'm just not going to do it, but let's move on to the last thing that I can easily show, I think, and that would be your speaker switch. The speaker switch is on the side right here, there it is right there, and that's just another D5, and then the bass and treble off to the left there, that's going to be F5 once again. So that's how you get the controls cleaned. see it beat all over and you know maybe I use too much I don't know a lot of you get so up in arms about how absolutely expensive this stuff is and uh, yeah I suppose I suppose $15 is a lot of money to some people but yeah I don't I don't remember the last time I bought a can of this stuff but I think it's mm -hmm. literally been three years like you know, what I do, I do on this channel, and I really haven't done that much work, but like, you know, the average person who's doing this all the time, um, it's, I think it's a necessary and worthwhile expense for your business. Okay, so now that we've cleaned the controls, let's just uh, turn this back on real quick and see if we have any uh, difference in performance. So, volume down, A speakers, where did I leave this? This should be on aux, and it is. Okay. So I still don't have a clear right channel. You could probably hear that. Now let's see if it's the loudness switch. It is, it is the loudness switch. So, yeah, I just kind of went through that and gave it a little more exercising. Uh, tape monitor is clean. Input is clean. Uh, let's check speaker. That's clean. Mono stereo works. Forget what that one does. So yeah, at this point, it just kind of turns into, you know, figure out which switch is giving you the grief, clean it again, 
and uh, see if that helps you out. So what I'll probably do right now is just put a little more D5 in that loudness switch and I'll exercise it really nicely. Just give it more. More! Okay, that feels a little better to me. Yeah, if you don't quite get it the first try, try again. Determine if you've got a bad switch and uh, yeah, because you might, you might need to find a parts unit and replace the switch. Especially if the unit's been through uh, something like this one has been through, where, again, you saw it. It was really gross. It was very nasty. I mean, I'd say we've got a working receiver at this point. lights up with the bass that's the uh, that's the power I'm pulling current and that'll result in some distortion too of course because it's not getting the power it needs because the dim bulb is taking it up that's the whole point of the dim bulb is to take up bad current but in this case it's a good current but if there were a direct short it would take that and the fuse wouldn't so honestly, I'm struggling a little bit with how to end this video. We've been kind of all over the place. I had the chat GPT idea. We tried fixing it and did it, and now like we actually have fixed it. So the next step is a full restoration. Instead of just doing the power supply board in this video and then having all the other boards in another video, I think I'm just gonna stop right here. I showed you that we fixed all the issues seen in the previous video. We cleaned the controls, we fixed the power supply, and now it's time for a full restoration. So we'll go board by board, we'll start with the power supply, make our way to the power amplifier board back here, and then all the preamp and everything else is on one board on the bottom of this receiver, with a few other exceptions, and then we'll replace the lamps too. And depending on how that goes, I might put the FM alignment and the final testing of this thing in the same video, just make it one big, it's done video. I bought this, I think, a year and a half ago now, so, it's time for this thing to graduate. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.